Hello, and welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about finding limits, but just looking at a bunch of numbers inside a table. I need to warn you that you will need a calculator for this lesson. So if you don't have one, you might want to grab one. I'll, I'll warn you again when we get to that point. But uh, graphing calculators are the best for this, but I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let's remember what we were doing before when we were talking about limits. We would just uh, have x approach a value of 3 from both sides, and then the limit would be a 4. Okay, not very difficult. That's what we've been doing. And I want to show you here is a table. If we just had a bunch of numbers, so we had this function, and we were plugging in x values really, really close to 3, you can see here that if this in between here was the 3, and again, a limit doesn't matter what the y value is at x equals 3, we're just talking about getting really close to it. So I could plug in something that's very close to 3, on both sides of. So you can see this table is 2.9, get even closer, 2.99. We could even get closer than that, 2.99999, really, really close to 3. Plug that into the function and it would spit out a y value that is what the y value is approaching of this limit. So you can see this is the graphical representation and this would be a table of values represent representing the exact same thing. So here is a table. If we answer the question as x approaches negative 4, what is the limit. So here x is getting really, really close to negative 4. So negative 4 would be in between these. And you can see the y value here, it is approaching 2.5. So that is the limit as x approaches negative 4 just from this table of values that the y value is approaching. Okay, pretty simple, not earth shattering stuff here that we're doing. Uh, now I'm going to show you some tricks with the calculator. I'm going to use a TI-84 plus CE, and it's not required that you personally have a TI-84, but uh, that's just what I'm going to be using. So anything that we don't that we do in our lessons, if you don't know how to do it, you're going to be expected to look it up. Whether you go on Google or YouTube or something and find somebody giving examples of how to use your calculator, or you just read the user manual. You can't expect your teachers to know how to do every single type of calculator. So here are, is our first problem we're going to use the calculator for. So we have our function of this crazy thing, and we're going to fill in a table of values to help us evaluate uh, at the limit as x approaches negative 2. So the first thing I'll do is in your table, let's just type in a negative 2 right here, and then we'll do some values that are close to it. So uh, how about negative 2.1 and then negative 2.001. And then as we go on the other side of negative 2, that would be really close to negative 2 would be negative uh, 1.999, and then not quite as close, we'll go negative 1.9. Okay, so to save ourselves the trouble of typing this thing into the function, into this x, over and over again, a graph graphing calculator can help us do this a little faster. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first is with a table of values. So let me pull my calculator over here. There we go. So some of you may have seen this before. We're going to first go to y equals right here, and you plug in the function. So I've already done that. I've got it preloaded. So go ahead and pause the video now and type that in if you don't have it. Then we're going to look at the table. So there's two things about the table. This is the table here, or we have table setup. If we just go straight to the table, uh, you might have some numbers here different than mine, and you can see all these x values. I could even go up, and you've got a whole bunch of them. Oh, look at that. Negative 2 is an error. So I know that line right there will be an error undefined, which makes sense, because if you plug in the negative 2, it doesn't work. Uh, but we want to have these exact values. So the way you do that is you go to Table Setup, and that's in blue. Let me show you that again. It's Table Setup is in blue for this Window button, so you have to hit the second blue button first, and then the Table Setup. We want this independent is our x's. Instead of it being on auto, we're going to shift it over to ask. That's all you have to change. Now when you go back to second and then the table here above the graph button, now it lets us plug in anything we want. Negative 2.1, hit enter, and voila, the y value appears, 22.01. Uh, now let's go ahead and do the next value for our table, negative 2.001. There we go, hit enter. And there's our next y value, negative 2, hit enter, it'll give us an error message, that's what we wanted. Uh, the next number was negative 1.999, hit enter, and then a negative 1.9, hit enter. Okay, so I'm going to grab this screenshot and drag it over here so I can have that on my screen and remember it. Alright, so then I can go ahead and take these values and plug them into the table. 
and there's my table all nice and pretty. So now you've got these here. I have on here that the table values are not as accurate. That was nice though. I didn't have to manually plug in all these X's over and over again to this crazy fraction in a calculator and hit enter each time. Man, that would just take forever. So this really did speed it up. But this has a problem. This table of values, you see how wide this column is? your numbers can only be as wide as the column. So it, it's going to have a rounding error for some of them. It won't go very many decimal places. Like if your number was really large, you wouldn't even see the decimal. So that's the problem with the, the table. So I'm gonna show you another way. It takes just a little longer, but it is more accurate. And that is, let's get rid of this. That is with the function notation. So let's go back to our calculator and we're gonna get out of this screen. So, and see this quit button, I'll hit second quit. And if you have anything on there, just hit clear and uh, so you clear everything off. Okay, so here's how the function notation works. I love this trick. Variables button, see this right here? Variables, and we're gonna use this a lot this year. If you go over to the Y variables and then the function, the very first option, so number one or just enter, we entered our function into Y1. So I'm gonna hit enter Y1. And now I just open my parentheses, type a negative 2.1 because over here, that was my first one. Close the parentheses and this is function notation. It's just saying take the function y1 and just use negative 2.1 as your input value. And boom, it spits that out. Now, instead of having to retype that, you can go second, watch this trick, second enter. See in blue, it says entry. Second enter just brings it up again. And then I just scroll over here and change it. So let's change it to negative 2.001. Close my parentheses, hit enter. And now you can see this is more accurate than what I had from my table. It went out a few more decimal places. It wouldn't ma matter for the problem that we're doing here, but for other problems that might make a difference. In fact, it will make a difference for later in the year. Uh, and then let's just do one more so you can see. So I'm gonna hit second enter. Uh, what if I just did the number negative two? So I'm gonna delete these things here. If I hit negative two, see it says undefined for my table. Error dividing by zero. Why am I dividing by zero? because it says X plus two on bottom. And if, in fact, you can say go to, and it brings you right back to where you entered it. It doesn't like plugging in a negative two to a denominator, okay? So that's function notation, very useful for what we'll be doing later this year. All right, back to our problem then. So the limit as X approaches negative two, if you look here at the Y values, what is the Y value getting closer and closer to? Well, as we surround negative two, that is a Y value of, of uh, 21. So that is the limit as X approaches negative two. And notice I had both left side of negative two and the right side of negative two, they are both approaching 21. So that's how I can confirm since they're both approaching the same number. Okay, now the last problem. For this one, it says the function f is continuous and increasing. Continuous just means there's never a break in the graph. It's all connected. Uh, increasing just meaning it's always going up. And that might not be a straight line. Whoops, it might not be a straight line. It might be curved, but the thing is always going up, increasing. For all x values that are larger, greater than or equal to one. Okay, so why is that important? It's just so that I can see here my y values. They're always going up. It's never going to dip down. That's an important thing because what if between 4.85 and 4.99, the graph like went down and then back up to 4.99? We don't know that. So this little statement just helps us know that it's always going up in y values. Okay. So what does this crazy thing mean? It just means the limit as x approaches two is basically saying, what is the cosine of f of x? What's f of x approaching? Well, as x gets really, really close to two, f of x is getting really, really close to five. So this is just saying, what is cosine of five? And that's gonna use a calculator. Uh, so when you plug that in a calculator and make sure this is important, make sure when you type the words, let me grab my calculator and bring it back over. Sine, cosine, or tangent, just as a reminder, the mode, if I click on mode, should always be radians right there. Not degree, you want radians in calculus. Physics often does degrees. We want radians. So let's quit out of that. So I'm gonna do cosine of the number five and hit enter, uh, drag that over. So 0 0.28, 0 0.283666. Two, like how far do I go? When do I stop? Do I have to write the whole thing out? I mean, that, that would take forever if I keep having to write that whole thing out. So there's my answer. Let's get rid of this now. So what in the world do we do with that? The AP exam requires you to have three decimals. Let me say that again, because I'm going to repeat that a hundred times this year. And kids are still going to miss problems on tests because they don't go three decimals. Three decimals, please. 
please, three decimals. So here's how you can do this. You can do one of two things. You can round it, rounded answer. So if we round, the answer would be 0 0.284. Okay, that's simple enough. Or you can truncate. And truncating, that's besides the fact that that just looks like a cool word, truncating is just writing three decimals. So I'm going to go 0 0.283, and then you just stop. Okay, we're not talking about significant di digits from physics, uh, excuse me, from science classes. We're just talking about a truncating is just write three decimals and stop. So basically what an AP reader, what the graders will do when they're looking at your problems, if you've written this whole long thing, 0 0.283666666, they just are trained to look at three decimals. They go one, two, three, and they ignore everything after that. They just read the three decimal places. So there's no reason to write more. So just e get used to either truncating 0.283 or rounding 0.284. Okay, so one or the other is, will work for this problem. All right, and then that's everything. That's it for this lesson. Good luck on the lesson and pack it. Rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.